Hey everyone, I thought I would do a little informal talk this week about something that doesn't really get talked about very much when it comes to Scientology, and that is uh, an internal organization that exists at the highest levels of Scientology called INCOMM, I-N-C-O-M-M, and that stands for the International Network of Computer Organized Management. It's a subunit under the Religious Technology Center, or under RTC, which is run by David Miscavige, of course. And this unit is responsible for computerization of Scientology internationally. Now, that might sound like, okay, let's have everybody get a PC and, you know, with Windows, or let's have everybody get a Mac and let's get you set up. And no, it's, you know, so you can do your word processing and your, and your spreadsheets and that sort of thing. But no, this is way more... Uh, ridiculous than that, because of course it's Scientology. Uh, so this was actually first set up as a unit back in the early 1980s, 1982, if I have my information correct. And um, this originated as a series of dispatches that L. Ron Hubbard was uh, carrying on with uh, various people. Uh, first guy, John Busby, another person was Foster Tompkins, another person was Nigel Oakes. I mention all these people by name because I knew all of them when I was in the Sea Org, but not because they worked at Income. I knew them because they were had been busted to lower posts, much lower posts. They were basically being gophers and, and furniture makers. And I had no idea when I was in the Sea Org that these guys had actually headed up this very important sub-organization, this INCOM, uh, and had actually created it uh, based on L. Ron Hubbard's directions back in the 80s. These were, you know, obviously long-term veteran Sea Org members. And um, this was originally set up under great, a great deal of financial uh, investment. Um, the, the computer room alone of INCOM is uh, about $11 million worth of computer equipment and, uh, and software and whatever that's in there. And this has gone through various iterations over the years, of course, because they were first putting this together back in the 80s when computers were much more primitive than they are now. They were spending uh, something like a quarter million dollars on scanners and $90,000 per computer unit. They were buying top of the line, I think they were called tandems. And when I came in the Sea Org in 1995, they were still using some of this stuff that they had purchased back in the day, and it was useless. I mean, in, you know, by, by the time technology had evolved, uh, the stuff we were using, uh, but I was not at, in INCOM itself, INCOM proper. I was out, you know, over in the, in the Continental Liaison Office or the West U.S. Management Office, and, uh, and we had to do our own, we had to pay for our own computer upgrades. But the idea with income, okay, is that it's not just a, play, a, a bunch of guys who do tech support or something. These guys have actually been entrusted with uh, seeing to it that all of Scientology management gets computerized. And by computerized, I mean that the computers actually take over the management function of the human beings who are right now uh, and have for all time been managing Scientology. Apparently, in the late 1970s and early 80s, L. Ron Hubbard was quite impatient and upset. And I think he said something like, the, you know, the management has betrayed me for the millionth time or something, something like that in these, in these series of dispatches. Now, I found out a great deal about this history from uh, ex-Scientologist Chuck Beatty, who was directly on the lines back in the 80s with INCOM and was working with them directly and had access to a number of confidential issues and uh, guidelines and policies that Hubbard wrote and these advice letters, these dispatches that were going back and forth. He had seen all of these. In fact, he had seen them and studied them. So not just, you know, once, once or twice, he actually did some very intensive study. So uh, he was a, a wealth of information on this. And he uh, let me know that Hubbard had just kind of lost it with management for the nth time and was like, okay, I want computers to be doing all this, okay? And the idea was that the computer system would be set up at Incom so that it would receive hundreds, thousands of, of data points from all over the world about Scientology in every single organization. And this system was supposed to be the ultimate in a, in a micromanagement down to every individual staff member. 
So in Scientology, <laughs> I've done a video laying out the hierarchy of Scientology, but that video really only scratches the surface of how crazy the Scientology management philosophy is. And Hubbard had the idea that every staff member would fill in a weekly report every Thursday at 2, it would go up to management uh, and eventually end up at INCOM. These, these reports would be scanned into the computers and indexed. And this was something that even, didn't even begin to touch reality until I was in management in the 2000s when these reports were very routinely being scanned in and indexed. Up until then, the reports might have been received and scanned, but nobody was really doing much of anything with them. And so you just had reams and reams and reams of, you know, years worth of these reports from all the various staff members about what they did that week, you know, in their job, right? And there were all kinds of, of things to fill in in these reports. For example, if you were like me, if I would, you know, when I was a course room supervisor and I was getting people through their classes, I had the list on my report every week who finished what classes and who started cl new classes, right, by name and what class they started. And, and the computer was supposed to actually be able to track every single person who was buying services and doing services at every single church all over the world, at every level of Scientology, staff members and public people. And the idea was the computer would receive these reports, and there were not just staff member week reports, there were also something, there were personnel files, right? We talk about in Scientology how they do these very invasive uh, life histories where they ask you everything about your life, every single person you've ever slept with, every single sickness you've ever had, every job you've ever had, like everything, all your relatives, all your friends, all your connections, that's all supposed to be part of the life history. All of that goes into a database at international management at, under income. And there are also um, routing forms, okay, and these, I won't get into a whole big thing on this, but basically when somebody is doing some activity in a Scientology organization, they have a sheet of paper that lists every single person you need to see in the organization and what order you need to see them in in order to get something done. For example, if you want to walk into a church of Scientology and get started on a, on a class, you're going to be put on a routing form that at the top of it says student onto class routing form. And the first person you're going to see is the uh, salesperson who's going to sell you the course and take your money. And then you're going to go to the bookstore officer and he's going to sell you the course pack and any books that you need. And if you need to buy an e-meter, he'll sell you that too. And it's right there on the routing form what to do. Buy the books that you need for this course, right? Then you go to the course administrator and he logs your name and, and takes all of your information and schedules you and then you see the course supervisor and you actually get started on the class. So all of this could be done without this piece of paper, but the piece of paper is supposed to ensure that every single person is treated the same and every single person gets every single step done that they're supposed to in order to do whatever action it is that they're doing. And there are hundreds of routing forms in Scientology for every single thing that's supposed to go on in a Church of Scientology. So all of these routing forms were made scannable so that a carbon copy of them could be sent up to INCOM every week and the computer was supposed to be able to get this information and scan it and see every person in every church who's doing every service, every staff member, when they started, when they left, everything, all the little data points that are supposed to go up to this computer system are supposed to be fed into it so that it can detect errors or problems in these organizations before the humans do. For example, let's say that Joe Schmo starts a course and the routing form tells the computer that he started a course and the weekly report from the course supervisor tells the computer that he started, that Joe Schmo started his course. Well, let's say two or three weeks go by and there's no notice to the computer that Joe Schmo has finished his course. So the computer is, is supposed to be able to send an alert down to that church, that org, 
to the supervisor and say, how come Joe Schmo hasn't finished his course yet? This is the level of micromanagement all the way down to every single person, right? So never mind all of the hierarchy of management that exists. This computer system is supposed to actually take over and run this whole show itself, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, it, it, it almost sounds plausible, <laughs> kind of. At least it did to me when I was in, when I was a staff member, but as you can imagine, all of this paper that we were filling out every week became more important than the people that we were actually dealing with. <coughs> Excuse me. What's more is the computer system in its infancy, when they first set this thing up and, and as far as they got it running, all it could get up to doing was nudging people on things, right? And there's more things that it would nudge people on. I could explain a whole slew of stuff about how Scientology churches are run and managed because there's programs and there's, there's basically a lot of excuses to send a lot of nudges and demands down to every single staff member in every single church. And the computer system was programmed to do this. So it became... Uh, as one person described, and, and which I thought was absolutely spot on, this computer system became the first spam machine ever invented. Because this, was, this started up back in the 80s, before email was even you know, a, a glimmer in, in, in uh, you know, anybody's eye. Okay? Uh, so, these, so the churches were getting printouts of these nudges that were going down to the, to the orgs. I mean, we got reams of these things. I was a staff member in Santa Barbara starting in 1987, and I, I, I would, you know, come across these piles of paper, and, and then we were supposed to file all these pieces of paper and all the files for all the staff members and stuff, and actually what we ended up doing was using it for scrap paper because it was so useless. These nudges and, and ethics orders and non-compliance chits and, and demands to get things done were so unrealistic because they didn't match up with anything because the system was faulty, it, has just, it, it was Swiss cheese, it had so many holes in it, that it really was just uh, something to ignore. And that was the practical application of this genius idea of L. Ron Hubbard. Now, where did L. Ron Hubbard get the idea that this would be something to do? Okay, you guys are going to love this. This, is, this has been talked about here and there, but it's, it's, a, it's a very arcane or, or, or difficult piece of Scientology lore to, to find or, or corroborate because it only exists in these, these dispatches that Hubbard had, these, these, these uh, communications Hubbard had with the very first people who were setting up income. And very, very few people have been exposed to or uh, uh, had access to those dispatches. Okay, I'm talking about like a handful of people. So the fact that we know about this at all is actually pretty amazing. This, uh, you know, compared to the number of people who know about Xenu, I mean, we're talking about a very tiny number of people. So, all right, the, and the, the, the dispatches say that there was a planet called Chug millions and millions of years ago. And Chug was run by the Duke of Chug. Whenever found out his name, he was always just the Duke, Duke of Chug. And he apparently was raising taxes on his population, uh, the people of Chug. But the, 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 the planet was managed by this high-tech computer system that ran this galactic empire, okay? And I don't think that this planet Chug or any of this had anything to do with Xenu or Markab or, or that whole other fantasy of Hubbard's. This was its own thing, okay? Now, so Chug is monitored by this computer system, this monstrous, high, you know, ruthlessly efficient computer system, which detects that taxes are going up, but revenues are not increasing from Chug to the central uh, dictatorship or central confederation or whatever the, the, the government system was. And it goes, hey, wait a minute, where's this money going? And the computer, having access to you know, anything and everything that it needs in terms of records, quickly went through the accounting systems and banking systems and finance systems of Chug and found out 
that old Duke of Chug was embezzling that money. He was taking it for himself. And the computer went, oh, and without any alert to any human being or anybody, the computer system went through its personnel records of all the rulers and, and politicians and people or whatever, however the system was set up, and it shows it found a worthy replacement for the Duke of Chug, and the computer then ordered that the Duke of Chug be executed for embezzlement. And this was all carried out at the orders of the computer, and a new ruler was installed, and that is um, the story that Hubbard based this entire concept of computerized management on and communicated to his to his juniors to the you know these guys who were setting up income now i've in this in the video that i made about the hierarchy of scientology i talked about how the whole system was a little ridiculous because of the number of people who would issue orders to you know every single staff member would get orders from three four five different people at every echelon this occurs uh, because of the, the screwy way that Hubbard set up the system. Then that whole system, which is bad enough, was then subverted by David Miscavige so that he became dictator and overall ruler of this and whatever he says goes and gets filtered down the lines to everybody. And that is uh, why Scientology is so horribly inefficient. But then when you add this computer system on top of it, it just makes it 10 times worse because of all the spamming of all these unreal, you know, these ridiculous orders that are going on. If you can imagine the difficulties that Facebook and Twitter and Google have with their algorithms, right? And these are uh, modern, top of the line, uh, very well educated teams of programmers who are working uh, very hard to get those algorithms working to accomplish certain tasks within the world of social media or within the world of internet access. Uh, you can imagine that the handful, the, the, the tiny little number of programmers that have been working at Income uh, in the Sea Org over all these years have not managed to work out any of this stuff. And so the poor staff members of all these uh, churches of Scientology all over the world are being bombarded not only by people coming in to see them all the time and deal with, you know, and order them around to do different things, most of which are ridiculous and have to do with making money. Uh, but they're then bombarded by these orders from this uh, computer system too. So anyway, you know, Hubbard, it was interesting to me to find all of this out because David Miscavige is known as somebody in his management style and in the way that he runs Scientology as somebody who doesn't like people very much. And he has been trying to replace human beings at different points in the Scientology system. Uh, for example, the salespeople. He wants to replace them with audiovisual uh, videos that will tell people about services and get them to buy the services rather than have a person sit there and sell you. David Miscavige's ideal scene is uh, picture is that a TV will sell you. <laughs> and that also happened, that also has replaced most of the effort being made in, science, in the churches uh, when it comes to bringing new people and dealing with brand new people off the street they're supposed to just wander around in these churches and see the, uh, these audiovisual displays of what is Dynetics and what is Scientology and what is an e-meter and, you know, and what, what is Applied Scholastics. All these front groups for Scientology, they all have videos made that tell you all about them. And the reason for that was to replace people so that people wouldn't be there screwing it all up. And because uh, the, the video will tell you everything you need to know and then, you know, if you have any questions, well, maybe then a human will step in. But that was supposed to be the thing that was going to sell you. But I didn't know that L. Ron Hubbard was the one who actually wanted to replace people first uh, back in the day with these computers because he was so fed up with the inefficiencies and uh, mistakes of management who were all trying to operate in a system he had created uh, which I guess in his final days, Hubbard didn't really see the error of his own ways and was a little, you know, so full of himself that he didn't quite get how uh, the whole thing was, 
was kind of his fault. <laughs> anyway, I thought this might be interesting to some of you folks out there in terms of uh, another aspect of the inefficiencies of Scientology and why it is that this group is really never going to get anywhere uh, because they are their own worst enemy. So, hope you found this uh, video educational, enlightening, and entertaining. Uh, thanks a lot for coming around, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.